The Xenomorphs have taken over the minds of horror fans for over four decades since the release of Ridley Scott's original in 1979. But a few years later, we got James Cameron's Aliens, and with that, arrived the Xenomorph Queen. With her dark and intimidating presence, the Queen Xenomorph has become a symbol of terror and fascination, and her fame, or rather, notoriety, can be attributed to a multitude of factors, including the rich lore established in the Alien films and the expanded universe that has flourished through comics and games. As the mother and leader of the Xenomorph Hive, the Queen Xenomorph plays a crucial role in the species' life cycle. This relentless and super resilient creature not only lays eggs, but also fiercely protects them, wielding unparalleled strength and size among most Xenomorph casts. Any individual or organism that dares to threaten her hive or eggs can expect a relentless pursuit, as the Queen Xenomorph combines cunning intelligence with formidable physical prowess in her hunts. Since the importance of a Queen Xenomorph within the Alien franchise cannot be understated, we thought it was prudent to explore this magnificent beast in all its acidic glory. Let's begin, shall we? Before we get into our explanation, nation we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Number 1. Formidable Characteristics of the Queen Xenomorph Among the diverse Xenomorph casts, the Queen reigns supreme and why not? She boasts striking physical abilities, intelligence, and strength. Towering at an intimidating height of approximately 4.5 meters, she dwarfs the other casts like drones and even Praetorians, but she may occasionally grow even more colossal in her later years. The Queen's deadliness lives in a few key traits. She has her mighty jaws armed with trans translucent, razor-sharp teeth measuring several centimeters in length. It's enough to chomp through just about anything and anyone. But she has an inner jaw as well, which also houses numerous razor-sharp teeth which take the form of a maw. This monstrous monarch's regality gets further exemplified because of her natural crown, or the carapace that also shields her mouth and face. Interestingly, this massive carapace also serves as an antenna of sorts picking up bioelectric, biochemical, and thermal signals. Her lower limbs possess double joints, providing her with enhanced mobility and agility. Furthermore, the queen has two sets of dorsal tubes, which take on a more menacing spike-like appearance compared to other xenomorphs. Her six-digit hands feature a notably elongated third finger, while her chest is safeguarded by an additional armored carapace. This outer mesoskeleton boasts remarkable resilience, capable of withstanding sustained automatic gunfire, albeit remaining vulnerable to armor-piercing ammunition. But it's not just the two primary arms that the Queen has. She also has a couple of secondary arms that are much smaller and extend ventrally from the center of her chest. You could think of these as the small arms of a T-Rex, and much like the extinct dinosaur's arms, we don't know the exact purpose of the Xenomorph Queen's secondary arms. As far as her tail is concerned, it's segmented and extremely long, but if it's a Xenomorph body part, then it needs to be extra deadly, right? So the Queen's tail ends in a blade-like tip which can slash, stab, make her victims fall, and more. Queens that lay eggs are hard to miss because of their huge ovipositors that extend from underneath their enormous tails. In fact, the ovipositors themselves can measure anywhere between 9 and 12 meters. The major part of the organ is usually suspended from the hive ceiling by what seems like straps created from the resin that xenomorphs usually secrete. In fact, much of the hive itself is created by this resin. Now, because the xenomorph queen's egg sac is huge and heavy, she finds herself immobile. This leaves her dependent on help from her drones and other subordinate xenomorph casts for protection and assistance. But that doesn't mean the xenomorph queen can't defend herself under extreme situations. She can very easily detach her ovipositor and fight in critical situations, but the process is excruciatingly painful for the queen. Furthermore, attaching the ovipositor again is no easy task either, so the queen prefers to let her subordinates deal with most situations once her egg laying has started. On the other hand, she can grow a new ovipositor in a reasonably short period of time, but it's equally as painful as detaching her original ovipositor. When she's laying eggs, she folds her legs beneath her main body and is supported by a biomechanical throne of sorts. As far as the rate of producing eggs is concerned, she can lay one egg every four minutes, which means 15 eggs an hour. Of all the xenomorphs you would find in a hive, the queen is the most resilient. The reason is simple. Her mesoskeleton is the thickest of all and has additional layers of armor, which is usually stronger than the armor of a Praetorian. 
This allows her to take near limitless punishment in the form of gunfire and other attacks. She would not retreat easily unless there's a threat of imminent death. However, much like other xenomorphs, the queen is also vulnerable to heat and fire, although her capacity to take such punishment is far higher. So if she's not laying eggs, she's a force to reckon with and can take down huge parties of enemies, be they human or predator. But it's not just her defensive capabilities that help her. Xenomorph queens have much higher muscle density than regular drones, which allows them to tear apart humans in synthetics using just two arms. All of this, when coupled with her size and strength, make her invulnerable during close quarter combat. And even the most skilled predators would not live to tell the tale if they engaged her from close range. Furthermore, she's extremely fast for her huge size. In fact, a few of them can run at speeds of up to 40 kilometers per hour. Because of their resilience and nigh invulnerability, they live longer and are less prone to death which also means that they can live long lives, sometimes in the way of tens of thousands of years. When she's put in extremely cold conditions or when they've been secluded with no way of extending their line, a xenomorph queen would invariably go into a certain hibernation where she would restrict all of her metabolism to save energy. She would simply wait for the opportune moment when there are hosts around whom facehuggers would impregnate. Now, let's talk about sex and, sorry, I mean that of the queens. So we know that xenomorphs are inherently a sexual, right? So why is it that a queen is given a feminine gender? Well, that's because of her feminine role of laying eggs, which is performed by female members in an insectoid eusocial society, such as a beehive. In fact, bees produce something called the royal jelly, and so does a xenomorph queen, but more on that later. Usually, there's just one queen in the hive. But on the off chance that two or more queens face each other, a battle for dominance and supremacy ensues. This deadly battle between the leaders of nature's apex killing machines is as deadly as it is necessary. The queen that becomes victorious becomes an empress, and she rules over all the other queens in her domain. So you see, this winter queen actually rises up a rank in the xenomorph hierarchy. But even empresses are dominated by a stronger xenomorph, the queen mother, the supreme leader of all xenomorphs on all planets. But again, we'll cover that a little bit. Now, since I spoke about multiple queens, what do we know about their appearances? Are they all similar in size, shape, and color, or are there differences? Well, xenomorph queens come with certain extremely subtle variations in their physical appearance, which is unlike the lower xenomorph casts who are largely indistinguishable from one another. So, the most striking feature is their color. Younger queens have a darker color, while the older ones have a more grayish hue, something that can be attributed to their age. Additionally, their crests may differ from one another, but but they're not so different as apples and oranges. While they all maintain a basic form, there are subtle differences. There could be additional protrusions, ridges, horns, or something like that. And sometimes these additional features wouldn't be present at all. While we're on the subject of their head, I think it's logical to talk about what's inside their big heads and how intelligent they are. Well, xenomorph queens are one of the most intelligent casts ever. Intriguingly, in Alien's Earth Hive, a queen even underwent a sort of IQ test and impressively achieved a score of one 75. They can operate machinery and even interpret and understand human actions, such as threats and blackmailing. Their understanding of human equipment stems from their ability to observe and learn at an extremely fast rate. Furthermore, they're smart enough to weigh the risks associated with one action as compared to another, which makes them more logical than feral or animalistic. For instance, when Ripley threatened to destroy the Hive and the Ovomorphs in the second Alien movie, the Queen ordered her brood to back off and stand down. This proves that Xenomorph Queen can, in fact, negotiate with humans. Having said that, in a do-or-die situation, a xenomorph queen will always save herself instead of her brood. This happens because they are creatures whose primary agenda in life is survival and procreation. And if the queen dies, it would be difficult for the rest of the hive to survive, as they'd find it difficult to find a new queen. But there are ways to do that, and this brings me to my next entry. Number 2. Birth of the Ultimate Matriarch Revealing the Origin and Creation of the Xenomorph Queen Now, there are several ways that this ultimate monarch can be brought into the world to wreak some good old acidic havoc. The Royal Facehugger If we talk about the creation of the Queen in Alien 3, it was largely unclear how exactly a Queen chestburster had found its way inside Ripley because the theatrical cut of the movie had a normal facehugger implanting the Queen embryo inside Ripley. But instead of dying after the process, which is a staple with facehuggers, this little guy went on and infected a dog as well. But this anomaly was addressed in what is called the Assembly Cut of Alien 3. Here, they brought in the idea of a Super Facehugger or a Royal Facehugger 
a being whose carcass was discovered in the slaughterhouse of Fiorino 161. This facehugger was considerably larger and more regal and had webbed fingers. So, how is a super facehugger or a royal facehugger created in the first place? Well, royal facehuggers, much like other facehuggers, come from ovomorphs. But these are special ovomorphs called royal ovomorphs. Under extreme situations, a xenomorph queen would lay a special egg, which would give birth to a royal facehugger. These mean creatures have armor and a bladed tail for extra protection. The most interesting aspect about them is their ability to impregnate two separate victims. This is done to ensure that the newly born queen chestburster has protection from the beginning in the form of a regular xenomorph drone, which could be a runner xenomorph, but that depends on the second host. So this one is probably the most franchise-friendly mode of producing a queen. Lower Caste Evolution Next up, we have something called the Lower Caste Evolution, which basically involves xenomorphs like drones and praetorians evolving or molting into a xenomorph queen. But this method of queen production is more common in games. However, in Alien vs Predator, the xenomorph drone called Specimen 6 evolved into a queen through molting. In the final cutscene of Alien vs Predator's Alien Campaign, there is a scene wherein Specimen 6 evolves into a queen from the praetorian stage, and this was once again reinforced in Alien vs Predator, Prey. Here, Deshande reveals that few drones can in fact turn into females with the sole purpose of finally turning into a queen. Additionally, in Alien vs Predator Requiem, the Pred alien we see in Gunnison, Colorado had the unique ability to impregnate victims directly, without the need for facehuggers. It seems that this Pred alien was a special form of a queen, or a premature form of a queen, and that's what gave it this unique method of impregnation. It allowed the Pred alien to quickly build a small army, but the Pred alien should have evolved into a more regular form, that is, an egg-laying xenomorph queen. Royal Jelly The substance known as Royal Jelly plays a pivotal role in the creation of xenomorph queens and other xenomorph casts like Praetorians. It operates in a manner similar to the Royal Jelly found in the hives of earthly bees and other eusocial organisms. In the world of bees, one lucky larva is chosen to become the queen. But how does a mere larva undergo such a transformation? Well, this little fellow is immersed in a sea of Royal Jelly, a half-water, half-protein concoction that resembles white snot. According to epigenetics, identical genetic material can yield vastly different creatures. This holds true for our humble bee friends, where the diligent worker bee and the regal queen bee differ not in their genes per se, but in which genes receive the royal treatment of activation. Similar principles apply to the xenomorphs, whose nourishment can shape their genetic destiny and determine their place in the intricate hierarchy of the xenomorph hive. Typically, a xenomorph queen is birthed through the favored method of a royal facehugger, but on rare occasions when a suitable host manages to resist the royal facehugger, the royal jelly is put to use. This substance possesses the astonishing ability to transform even lowly drones into majestic xenomorph queens. However, Praetorians exclusively undergo molting or evolution through the consumption of royal jelly because they are already almost as strong and powerful as a queen, and their transformation takes less time and effort. On the other hand, the royal jelly is given to the drones, ensuring their metamorphosis into powerful Praetorians. But what makes royal jelly so extraordinarily powerful and effective, you may ask? In in the Alien RPG, it was unveiled that this extraordinary substance contains a specialized strain of Agent A03959X.9115, commonly known as the Black Goo. This Black Goo is renowned for its immense power to transform and mutate life forms. Therefore, if the royal jelly indeed harbors a strain of the black goo, its potential for wondrous and awe-inspiring transformations is unquestionable. Siblicide in Aliens, Theory of Alien Propagation, we learn about yet another mode of queen formation. A reigning queen receives primal signals guiding her to lay special breeding eggs, housing precious facehuggers carrying queen larvae. However, these eggs are swiftly relocated from the queen's chamber. You see, the queen perceives her own offspring as potential threats, igniting a primal instinct to eliminate them. The eggs, carefully selected by drones, are assigned the healthiest and most robust hosts. Once these formidable facehuggers emerge, a brutal melee ensues among them as chestbursters, much like the fierce clashes witnessed among young female hyenas. They engage in a fight for survival, battling each other relentlessly until only one victor emerges. This survivor, hardened by the vicious struggle, goes on to establish her own hive, ready to command her loyal subjects. 
Number 3. Xenomorph queens have the ability to communicate in multiple different ways. The communication abilities of xenomorph queens have honestly left fans fascinated and perplexed. While audible screeches have been observed as a means of instruction to their brood, it is believed that their true method of communication is far more intricate and multifaceted. Pheromone release and ultrasound have been proposed as potential channels for their exchanges. Some at Wayland yutani even speculate that queens and their offspring share a mysterious bio electrical hive consciousness, considering the constant contact and communication maintained across significant distances and barriers. The grand headcrest of the queens might serve as a crucial element in this process, acting as a receptor and transmitter for the intricate signals employed. Number 4. The Xenomorph Hive a queen's home and workstation. The xenomorph hive, often referred to as the nest or lair, serves as both a living space and operational hub for the xenomorph queen. These hives are constructed using a substance known as webbing, which is produced by xenomorph drones through their vomit, much like bees producing honey. The webbing, initially in a gelatinous state, eventually hardens into a dark and resilient resin-like material. Similar to spider webs and wasp nests in certain aspects, xenomorph hives exhibit unique architectural characteristics. Characteristics. The construction of a hive typically begins with a central egg chamber where the queen takes residence. From this central chamber, a network of intricate tunnels extends outward forming a maze-like structure. The webbing serves not only as a building material, but also as a means of cocooning captured organisms. Potential hosts are immobilized and restrained by being cocooned to the walls, ensuring their inability to escape or disrupt the process of chestburster implantation. It is worth noting that a hive can form even in the absence of a queen, as the construction of a hive may precede queen development. Hives are typically established in environments characterized by elevated temperatures. The queen often selects locations such as large industrial facilities that naturally provide a suitable heat source. It remains unclear whether the hive structure or the xenomorphs themselves have the ability to elevate temperatures within the hive to meet this requirement. A distinct feature of the hive is the presence of host cocoons. Captured organisms are enveloped in resin during the cocooning process, effectively immobilizing them. While the cocooning is comprehensive, the head and neck of the host are typically left free to allow a facehugger to subdue the victim. In some cases, hosts may be mutilated to fit into the hive structure. Additionally, xenomorphs use their resin to seal any life-threatening wounds suffered by the host during capture, ensuring the victim survival long enough to serve as a successful host. Once the hosts have fulfilled their purpose, no effort is made to remove them from the hive. Their corpses are left in place to decompose, although there is evidence suggesting that the xenomorphs may devour these bodies as a source of nourishment. Hives can vary greatly in size, ranging from small chambers occupied by only a few drones or warriors to extensive nests, housing hundreds of members. But all hives are invariably overseen by an egg-laying queen. In larger infestations, satellite hives may be established in the surrounding areas, serving as outlying bases of operation operations for xenomorph warriors. Although solitary xenomorphs rarely require their own hives, there have been instances of individual creatures establishing small nests. It should not really come as a surprise that the largest known hive was discovered on Xenomorph Prime, covering a substantial portion of the planet. Number 5. The Queen Xenomorph's Host-Influenced Attributes Once again, the attributes acquired by the Queen Xenomorphs from their host organisms remain a subject of uncertainty and speculation. Two notable instances involving human hosts, namely those observed at Hadley's Hope and aboard the USM Auriga, depicted queens that were remarkably similar in appearance. It should be noted that the cloned queen aboard the Auriga exhibited a secondary reproductive cycle due to inadvertent genetic contamination. However, the appearance of a pred alien, identified as a juvenile queen, which attacked Gunnison, Colorado, differed significantly, displaying distinct characteristics inherited from its Yaucha host. Further examples have provided conflicting evidence on this matter. In some cases, encountered queens exhibited a resemblance or identical appearance to the Hadley's Hope Queen, despite their host organisms being non-human. Notably, the matriarch discovered on BG-386, a planet located light years away from Earth, demonstrated a similar appearance to the Hadley's Hope Queen. The matriarch's age was estimated to be tens of thousands of years, predating the presence of humans in that region, which makes her appearance quite curious. These variations suggest that queens unlike other xenomorphs, may possess the ability to assimilate physical traits from their host organisms, leading to distinctive forms. However, the inconsistencies observed among encountered queens indicate a complex and incompletely understood relationship between queens and host-influenced attributes. <laughs> no. 
Number six, defeating a Xenomorph Queen, Ripley edition. During a daring rescue mission led by Ellen Ripley, the Xenomorph Queen was encountered within the depths of the hive. Ripley ventured into the nest where they came face to face with the queen and her brood of eggs. Sensing their presence, the queen prepared to defend her offspring as Ripley ignited a flamethrower, setting ablaze the eggs in the nest. Seizing the opportunity, Ripley and Newt swiftly made their escape just before the enraged queen broke free from her egg sack. Seeking refuge on an aircraft landing platform, Ripley intended to rendezvous with the android Bishop, who would transport them to safety. However, to their dismay, Bishop was nowhere to be found, and the resourceful Queen, displaying remarkable intelligence, managed to track them down by using an elevator. Despite the perilous situation, Bishop eventually arrived in the nick of time, rescuing Ripley and Newt from the Queen's clutches. However, as they reached a ship orbiting the planet LV-426, the Queen impaled Bishop with her tail and severed his head from his body. Ripley then confronted the Queen, determined to protect Newt no matter the odds. Encased in a Caterpillar P5000 workloader, Ripley engaged in a fierce battle against the formidable Queen. Using her surroundings to her advantage, Ripley strategically opened a nearby airlock, causing both herself and the Queen to plummet to a lower level. As Ripley struggled to escape from the confines of the workloader and ascend to safety, the Queen clutched onto her leg. In a desperate act, Ripley opened the main airlock, propelling both the Queen and the remnants of the workloader into the vastness of outer space. The Queen's agonized screeches faded into the void as she was presumably vanquished. Number 7. Are Queens More Powerful Than Predators? The clash between Predators and the formidable Xenomorph Queens has always been regarded as a prestigious challenge by the Predators. These righteous hunters have sought to defeat her in combat, and while some emerged victorious, the others perished. Additionally, capturing a live Queen is considered an act of great honor and valor, as it presents an opportunity to control the production of alien eggs which are, in turn, used in ritualistic Predator hunts. So let's talk about a few of the notable encounters between Predators and the Xenomorph Queen. Escaped Queen vs. Young Predators In the events depicted in Alien vs. Predator War, a clan led by Topknot captured a live Xenomorph Queen and brought her on board their ship. However, Machiko Noguchi, a human who had been living and hunting alongside the Predators, decided to betray them, and she released the captive Queen. Now, she did this because she learned that the Predators were going to use the Queen against humans. You should check out our exploration video of Miss Noguchi if you haven't seen it. Anyways, taking advantage of the element of surprise, the Queen swiftly overwhelmed the young Predators who were armed with only pickaxes. Despite being outnumbered, the Queen managed to escape to the planet's surface, marking a rare instance of an alien Queen emerging victorious against several Predators, in this case, an entire hunting party. Orion Nebula Queen vs. the Vega 4 Predator The Vega 4 Predator embarked on a journey from Vega 4 to the Orion Nebula in the Alien vs. Predator video game. After confronting various Xenomorphs, including the likes of Snake Xenomorphs, the Predator had to fight the Xenomorph Queen as the final boss. Interestingly, this Queen was not exceptionally large, but she did possess bulkiness and agility. Having said that, the Vega 4 Predator successfully defeated the Queen, but one cannot deny that the encounter was somewhat underwhelming. Alien Queen vs. Three World War Predators A decade after the events of the first Alien vs. Predator comic, a group of Predators, along with Colonial Marines, embarked on a mission to capture a live Xenomorph Queen, because why not? The Queen possibly descended from the Xenomorphs on Ryushi, the arid planet where all the action in the first AVP comic takes place, and she was nothing like an easy target. The initial confrontation proved challenging, and it resulted in casualties among the Yaucha and Colonial Marines. But, in the end, the Queen was eventually subdued and kept in chains. She was later brought into proximity with other Xenomorphs who were controlled by the Killer Predator clan. The mission succeeded, and the Queen assumed leadership of a specialized breed of tusked Xenomorphs. If you wish for us to explore this comic more, you know where to tell us. Alien Queen Mother vs. Hunter and Warrior Predator In the infested city of Sandrad from the arcade game Alien vs. Predator, the Hunter and Warrior Predators embarked on a mission to eradicate the alien menace. Their path led them to an encounter with the Queen Mother and her eggs within a building transformed into a xenomorph hive. Initially, the Queen was attached to her egg sac and naturally did not pose much in the way of challenge. However, even after seemingly being defeated, the resilient xenomorph queen survived and pursued her hunters with the other 
utmost ferocity. In the final battle aboard General Bush's ship, the Queen managed to kill Bush and engage the two remaining Predators once again. The Queen proved to be as fine a challenge as the Predators would have wanted, but they emerged victorious, albeit at a great cost. They crashed the ship into the city and saved Earth from the alien threat. Super Predators Capturing the LV-412 Queen In the game AVP Evolution, the Super Predator clan aimed to capture a live Xenomorph Queen on LV-412. Within an underground temple, several Super Predators attempted to subdue the Queen using chains. Naturally, the Queen resisted. She even killed one of the Yaucha by severing his head. Next thing we know, she summoned waves of Xenomorph warriors, but they were all ultimately defeated. Despite the Super Predators gaining temporary control over the Queen and her Xenomorphs, the situation could could have gone south at any given moment, but the day was saved by a lone Yaucha warrior from the Jungle Hunter clan, the same clan to which the first Predator belonged. He infiltrated the temple and killed the Xenomorph Queen. This ensured that the Super Predators never managed to use the Xenomorph Queen for their nefarious purposes. LV-1201 Queen vs. Prince In Aliens vs. Predator 2, the Prince Predator encountered a Xenomorph Queen in the ruins of an ancient temple on LV-1201. Although his primary objective was to pursue Vasily Rykov, the Predator had to engage the Queen simply because of his natural instinct and hatred towards the Xenomorph species. While the Queen was defeated, no trophy was claimed, as Prince was solely focused on Rykov and the Predator biomask that he had stolen. You see, Predators aren't cool with their tech falling into the hands of other species, especially humans. Interestingly, a Xenomorph Empress was also present in the game, although neither the Colonial Marine nor the Predator character engaged in combat with her. Topknot's Clan Capturing a Queen Topknot's Clan also accomplished the remarkable feat of capturing a live Xenomorph Queen in the AVP War comic series. The battle preceding the capture resulted in casualties among the Predators and the Queen, sacrificing waves of Xenomorph drones for defense. Machiko Noguchi intervened, distracting the Queen and allowing the makeshift prison door to close on her. The Queen was successfully captured, offering the Predators the opportunity to obtain Xenomorph eggs. Cavern Queen vs. Unnamed Predator In the Alien vs. Predator 1999 PC game, the final boss of the Predator campaign featured an honorable battle between an unnamed Predator and a Xenomorph Queen. The Predator deactivated all energy weapons and relied solely on melee attacks and a spear gun. Now, we've already talked about how difficult this can get, I mean close quarters combat with a Xenomorph Queen. The Queen, guarded by facehuggers in the confined caverns, engaged the unnamed Predator. Despite sustaining injuries, the Predator successfully defeated the Queen. This encounter culminated with the Predator standing triumphantly over his new trophy. Ryushi Queen vs. Deshonde In the Alien vs. Predator comic series, the intense confrontation between Deshonde and the Ryushi Queen showcased one of the earliest and most renowned battles between these formidable adversaries. Following the infestation of the Ryushi colony, the Queen established her hive within the commercial transport vessel named the Lecter. Teaming up with Machiko Noguchi, Deshonde engaged the Queen in a brutal clash. Although Deshonde sustained fatal injuries, he managed to sever the Queen's head. Before his death, Deshonde blooded Machiko signifying her transition into a worthy warrior, and she claimed the queen's head as her trophy, a feat that's nearly impossible for a human to achieve. The Antarctica Queen vs. Scar Predator The Scar vs. Antarctica Queen encounter at the conclusion of the film Alien vs. Predator in 2004 marked the first and only live-action clash between these iconic creatures. After surviving a self-destructing underground temple, the Queen confronted Scar, a young blood Yaucha warrior. Despite Scar's missing shoulder cannon, he engaged the Queen with various projectile weapons. Eventually, Scar and his human ally, Alexa Woods, chained the Queen to a water tower on the edge of a precipice. In her final moments, the Queen mortally wounded Scar before plunging into the frigid Antarctic waters. Number 8. Revealing the gruesome destiny of alien xenomorph queens overlooked by the movies. Written by Kelly Sue DeConnick and Augustin Alessio, Prometheus Fire and Stone featured a group of humans who found themselves stranded on LV-223. They had been sent to find out what exactly happened to the original crew of the Prometheus, but their mission saw a catastrophic turn. These stranded individuals desperately try to survive and attempt to board a ship that crash-landed on the moon years earlier, originating from Hadley's Hope. To their utter 
shock and disgust, and of course a bit of horror, they discover the ship to be inhabited solely by an enormous queen xenomorph and her brood. During the ensuing events, the humans manage to eliminate the xenomorphs within the ship, including the queen herself. Of particular note is the queen's alarming growth within the confines of the ship. Despite the ample space available to her, the queen's size exceeds all expectations, resulting in a bulbous and distorted body. This growth continued unabated throughout the years, and her brood resided on LV-223. The queen's sheer size renders her limbs useless and her torso swollen, effectively trapping her within the very hive she populates. Now, this sort of representation bears a stark resemblance to a queen bee, which also remains largely immobile and needs help from worker bees to even move. This unfortunate circumstance transforms the once menacing characteristics of her monstrous size into a pitiable weakness. Furthermore, it sheds light on the limited lifespan of xenomorph queens and their propensity to exceed the boundaries of their own physical capabilities. It is implied that queens are destined to grow to a point where their bodies become burdensome, rendering them immobile and confined within their hives. Number 9. Every major variant of Xenomorph Queen. Queen Mother. Residing on Xenomorph Prime, the home planet of the Xenomorphs, this commanding and colossal being holds the role of supreme leader. Towering over regular Xenomorphs, the Queen Mother's immense size reaches at least up to 14 meters in length. She possesses spiky spines, tentacle-like appendages, and a tail adorned with sharp blades, granting her deadly offensive capabilities. Her telepathic abilities allow her to communicate with vast numbers of Xenomorphs across great distances, even inducing nightmares in humans. The Queen Mother's primary role is to protect the royal jelly. To safeguard her position, she resides in a chamber with six orbs containing royal jelly, eliminating any potential contenders for her throne. Notably, attempts have been made to capture and manipulate the Queen Mother, leading to the emergence of alternate factions and rival Queen Mothers. These power struggles have resulted in the creation of monstrosities such as the Red Queen Mother. Predalien Queen. The Predalien Queen, an unnatural and bioengineered abomination, made her debut in the 2003 real time strategy video game Aliens vs. Predator Extinction on the planet LV 742. As a hybrid of xenomorphs and yauchas, she possesses a brownish hue in her skin, reminiscent of other Predaliens. Unlike a regular xenomorph queen, she lacks the secondary pair of arms and dreadlocks but retains the distinctive mandibles and head crest. Created by Dr. Samuel Kadinsky, the Predalien Queen is believed to have originated from a bad blood predator, though her specific backstory or lore is not established within the game. Predators view Predalians as abominations, and in response, an elite clan of hunters known as the Ancient Suppressors are sent to eradicate the Queen. The inclusion of the Predalien Queen sparks a three-way conflict between humans, predators, and aliens in the game's narrative. The Acheron LV-426 Queen Leading the Xenomorph Hive at the Hadley's Hope Colony, the Acheron, or LV-426 Queen, used human hosts who were running the colony. When communication ceased from the colony, Ellen Ripley and a squad of colonial marines were dispatched to investigate. During the confrontation, Ripley encountered the Queen face to face, but I already spoke about this in previous entries, so there's no point in repeating things. Owned Queen on Origa. Introduced in Alien Resurrection, the Clone Queen is something of an enigma as far as queens go. After the death of Ellen Ripley, her DNA is retrieved and preserved by scientists from Wayland yutani Corps. The United States military then uses this DNA to create a clone of Ripley, intending to extract the Queen's xenomorph within her. However, the cloning process results in genetic disorders due to the faulty integration of xenomorph and human DNA. Despite the premature deaths of seven unsuccessful clones, the eighth clone appears to be a success. The United Systems military surgically extracts the queen from the cloned Ripley, allowing her to begin laying eggs. The Origa spacecraft becomes home to the cloned queen, along with numerous cloned xenomorphs. The cloned queen exhibits a remarkable transformation in her reproductive capabilities, as she develops the ability to transform her egg sac into a womb. This significant genetic change liberates her from the need for hosts, and allows her to give birth to fully formed xenomorphs instead of laying eggs. Notably, the cloned queen gives birth to a humanoid xenomorph with the ability to communicate in low growls and human tones. Intriguingly, this new xenomorph instinctively recognizes Ripley 8, the clone of Ellen Ripley, as its mother, instead of the cloned queen.
The Specimen 6 Queen The Specimen 6 Queen, featured in the 2010 video game Alien vs. Predator, was a highly intelligent xenomorph, bred under controlled conditions by Dr. Groves under the orders of Carl Bishop Wayland, Specimen 6 displayed remarkable intelligence from a young age. When it sensed hostility during its initial escape attempt, Specimen 6 retreated back into the host and burst out from the mouth instead. Branded with the numeral 6 on its head, Specimen 6 underwent various tests to assess its lethality, with human technology technicians and guards serving as its prey. Despite being subjected to captivity, Specimen 6 exhibited intelligence and empathy when it heard the cries of a captured xenomorph queen and attempted to aid her, but was once again prevented by Dr. Groves. During the opening of a Yaucha pyramid by the Wayland Corporation, a devastating shockwave disabled security systems, providing an opportunity for Specimen 6 to escape. It quickly freed its fellow xenomorphs. Eventually, Specimen 6 opened the facility's main gate, leading the xenomorphs into the jungles. In subsequent encounters with Yaucha Elite and Youngblood Yaucha, Specimen 6 initially faced a disadvantage, but survived because of its intelligence. By feigning death and exploiting the vulnerable position of the Yaucha, Specimen 6 launched a surprise attack using its tail. Although ultimately captured by Wayland's combat droids, Specimen 6 underwent a transformation into a queen and unleashed a devastating massacre upon its captors. The Matriarch The Matriarch appeared in the 2010 game Aliens vs Predators. Having been captured by Yaucha hunters thousands of years ago, she was held captive within their pyramid until they eventually abandoned the planet, leaving her to survive on her own. Over time, the Matriarch grew old and weak, and she was eventually found and captured by Wayland's forces. Despite her diminished physical capabilities, she maintained control over her offspring, commanding them through constant cries for help. Her influence prompted Specimen 6, among her progeny, to break free from captivity and rescue her. The matriarch bore several scars on her face and crest, evidence of the battles she endured through her long and war-torn life. The Flying Queen The Flying Queen is a variant known for her unique ability to fly. The Flying Queen stands out as an underrated and exceptionally lethal entity. Although she has not been prominently featured in mainstream media, her appearances in mini comics such as Aliens Night Strike, Aliens Swarm, Operation Aliens Space Marines, and the arcade game Aliens Armageddon have been gracious enough to feature her. In Night Strike, the Flying Queen showed her surprising ability by rescuing Atax using her talents. Mistakenly assuming Atax was a fellow queen, due to the Xenomorph Queen exoskeleton. However, in Armageddon, she displayed a more aggressive nature, as she defeated a regular queen in combat. Physically, the Flying Queen resembles a dragon-like creature with an imposing wingspan. The color of her wings can vary, ranging from black to blue, with a thick, membrane-like texture. Her advanced tail serves multiple purposes, including navigation and offensive capabilities. The Flying Queen possesses two pairs of clawed hands, with the larger pair used for attacking prey, and the smaller pair employed for lifting objects. Vampiric Queen The Vampiric Queen was first featured in Aliens Vampirella, a crossover between the Alien and Vampirella franchises. In the story, the vampire named Vampirella, known for her moral and kind nature, joins forces with a group of humans to investigate suspicious activities in a cave. Within the cave, they discover a collection of xenomorph eggs. Proximity to the eggs triggers their hatching, resulting in facehuggers attacking the humans. Vampirella is impregnated by a royal chestburster, giving rise to a unique xenomorph queen offspring. Distinctive to the Vampiric Queen is her possession of a pair of wings, setting her apart from xenomorphs that gestate from human hosts. Additionally, the Vampiric Queen undergoes an accelerated development process, reaching adulthood at a heightened pace. Curiously, the Vampiric Queen is not the first instance of a Vampiric Xenomorph crossover, as a similar concept was explored in the short story Buffy the Vampire Slayer, In Space, No One Can Hear You Slay. Empress. The Empress was introduced in the Alien vs Predator 2 video game. Residing on planet LV-1201, she stands out from other queens due to her larger size and control over multiple hives. Captured by Dr. Eisenberg of the Wayland yutani Corporation, the Empress ultimately seeks revenge by incapacitating him and using him as a host for her offspring. It is widely believed that the size of a queen can correlate with the size of her hive, suggesting that the Empress, being exceptionally large, has grown in proportion to the expansion of her dominion. Despite her autonomy over multiple hives, she remains subordinate to the Queen Mother. An interesting variation of the Empress is the War Empress. These formidable creatures undergo a genetic and evolutionary response triggered by battle, resulting in an enhancement of their exoskeleton by approximately 70%. This augmentation significantly elevates their resilience, making them incredibly challenging to defeat. The 
Antarctic Queen. The Antarctic Queen from the 2004 film Alien vs. Predator was captured by predators thousands of years ago. She was confined within a pyramid to fulfill her role in their rite of passage, birthing xenomorph offspring. When humans inadvertently awakened her, she began laying eggs, leading to a confrontation with a group of predators. Scar, Celtic, and Chopper, the three predators assigned to eliminate the xenomorph threat and undergo the rite of passage, encountered the queen's offspring, including a xenomorph named Grid who served as her loyal subordinate. The Queen from LV-223 The Queen of the Moon LV-223 made appearances in the comic series Prometheus Life and Death and Aliens Life and Death. Visibly mutated, the exact cause of her transformation remains unknown. Speculations suggest that her peculiar appearance may stem from gestating inside a native organism of the moon or exposure to the black goo. In Prometheus Life and Death, colonial marines encounter the engineer's ship, where conflicts arise with the Yauchas, who also seek to control and salvage the advanced technology. However, when the reawakened engineer inside the ship emerges, the humans realize their position at the bottom of the food chain. In Aliens, Life and Death, the humans form an unlikely alliance with the Xenomorph Queen on LV-223, persuading her to recognize the ancient god as a threat to her hive. With her tail, she manages to pierce the engineer, which was a rare instance of a Xenomorph siding with humans. The Red Queen Mother In the comics Alien Female War and Alien Genocide, humans capture the Queen Mother from Xenomorph Prime, leading to chaos on the planet. Following the Queen Mother's abduction, the Royal Guards of Xenomorph Prime initiate the process of molting a drone to give rise to a new Queen Mother. Seizing the opportunity, a faction of rebellious Xenomorphs breaks away and establishes their own Red Queen Mother. This development sparks a civil war among the Xenomorphs, resulting in widespread genocide. Human forces align themselves with the Black xenomorphs during this conflict, driven by their desire to acquire the royal jelly while the two factions battle each other. Ultimately, the Red Queen Mother is slain, allowing the black xenomorphs to resume the molting process and give rise to another Queen Mother. It is important to note that the red coloration of the red xenomorphs in the comics is purely illustrative, serving to distinguish the factions. In reality, the two factions may possess distinct scents or other intangible differences. So that's all we had on Xenomorph Queens. If you think we should explore more such fascinating beasts from the alien universe or others, feel free to reach out through the comments section down below, and I assure you that we'll do our best to work on them. Oh, and if you have any insights, suggestions, or tidbits on Xenomorph Queens that I may have missed, do let me know about that as well. And, as always, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day!